That's what I want to watch. What's going right? Uplifting stories. The good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. We hear you. He's just so bluffy. Your stories. I love you. How sweet is that? Things that nurture yeah. my soul. Focusing on greatness from across the country. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. So sit back and enjoy the lighter side of life. I'm gonna grab some coffee. <laughs> right here on Afternoon Focus. Oh, hello to you. Welcome to Afternoon Focus. I'm Julie Grant. And I'm Rob Nelson. Thanks so much for hanging with us on this Thursday afternoon. Yes. Almost the end of the week. Hang in uh, there. Friday Hang Eve, my there. friend. Friday <laughs> Eve. So we'll try to put you in a good mood as we yeah. do. We start, as always, with stories from the very top of our feed. All of them today happen to center around music. Ooh, Boom. like that. It is officially December, which is crazy. Where did this year go? December 1st today. Almost uh, Christmas time. Crazy. Yeah. It was Start shopping, Rob. Right. It was just Memorial Day. <laughs> okay. The Big Apple in full-blown holiday mode last night, and uh, a lot of things were shining bright in the yeah. legendary Rockefeller Center. Three, two, one. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. There it is in all its glory. Rockefeller Center celebrated its 90th annual tree lighting ceremony. And what is a holiday celebration without some festive music from some very special guests? Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. Please come. You're in your festive red, by the yeah, way. Yeah, right. I just Christmas like Christmas today. Total coincidence, but the producers <laughs> were glad to see it. Yes. The red. We love a theme. Oh, my gosh. Okay, and that show last night, right? What a concert great, those great. people got. They do it big. I mean, there's so certain cool. things. Thanksgiving, the parade, the Macy's parade, of course. That means, you know, that's a uh, symbol of Thanksgiving. That tree going up and lighting up, that means it's Christmas. Certain things are just big. Everyone knows it or, or has seen it. And the, the Rock Center tree is, is one of those things. Oh, yeah. Gives you chills. Well, you lived in New York for a long I time. Did. Was that a, a moment like <laughs> you can remember going to see it or were you too busy? You worked a lot. I would <laughs> stop and see it if my job took me in that area. Okay. I wouldn't go just to see it because if you live in New York, you tend to avoid Midtown because sure. it's always crazy. And then this time of year, it's really crazy. But it, it is beautiful. 14 tons and more than 80 feet tall. Think about it. Wow. That's how big that, that tree is. It's So it, it, it's crazy. It gives you chills when it lights up. It's so pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And one of my dear friends, big shout out to Natalie Pascarello, one of my dearest friends. She's a sensational journalist, works in New York. She got to MC the tree lighting. So oh. I was like living for her Instagram last night, seeing the Facebook Live and the nice Instagram gig. Live and all that stuff going on. And yeah, yep. really, really cool. It's officially the holidays. The tree, the red dress, it's holidays. Oh, holidays. yeah. There we go. It's here. Well, you know, in that concert, we talked about great to see those famous faces. And we're yeah. going to kind of stick with the music theme with this next story. One of music's biggest artists making major history, superstar rapper Megan Thee Stallion is the first black woman to grace the cover of Forbes 30 Under 30. Wow. Nike, Revlon, and Cash App are a few of the billion dollar brands working with the hip hop sensation, if you haven't heard. She also has a Netflix deal, a world tour, and an upcoming documentary. Mm, I mean, look, she's huge. I mean, A-list, a you know, incredible mm -hmm. talent, and she's doing what the smart celebs do. You, while you're hot, you sign those deals, you get those big endorsement deals, you sign with the big companies, and you, you let your career blow up. And that's what she's doing right now. She's having Having a moment. Exactly. Cover Forbes, 30 under 30. I oh. mean, come on. Right. Yeah. When I read that, I thought, oh, wow. I guess she is young. I mean, I know she's young, but I didn't even realize that young. And to be such an Already. entrepreneur, I mean, she's really dipping into everything. I mean, she's got a, a business empire. She's not just, you know, a musician. That's right. And really talented. She's rapper. doing it all right now. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. And making a little history along the way. So she got it all covered. There you go. Enjoy. Uh -huh. And speaking of music's biggest act, superstar Adele has just started her 
Las Vegas residency. And if you've ever been lucky enough to go to one of her shows, you know there's rarely a dry eye in the house. She does kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> usher in the waterworks yeah. for a lot of people, a lot of relationship <laughs> songs, all that kind of stuff. But there was this moment of levity when a fan wanted a picture with her. <laughs> so you're meeting this like global star and you got the jacked up filter <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> you're like already nervous. You're like, oh, I had the clown filter on or whatever it was. Poor thing. Hashtag fail. Yeah, that is terrible. Like you got to watch that. Even like TikTok. Like it's funny. One of the things I'm seeing right now is the Kim Kardashian filter. And like, oh, you know, and they this. just offer you the filters. Like the other day I went to do something and I was like posting something for court TV right, on right. TikTok and like the frog filter came up. I'm like, what is this? Like, I didn't tap this. Like, why does it say it's going to rib it? Like, <laughs> and and like who that. uses this filter? Why do you, why, why does this exist? Right. Using it? I know, but the filters are a big deal. They're big people. Yeah, people they can love be it. useful. Yeah, yeah they I mean, can. They, yes, they can. Love a good filter. Totally <laughs> admit that. But yeah, apparently Adele was like, "That is distorting my face." She's like, "We don't look like that." We don't look like that. No. So but she was, she, she was really cool about it too, which kind of, you know, she seems so authentic in, in a way. So that you could tell in that moment, she, she played it off, had made it funny, and then moved on. I'm sure. You know, they, exactly. they eventually got the picture. I hope the fan so. One. I, I hope so, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're fumbling with your phone. Adele's right there. So I, I yeah. want to see the real picture. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Now it's time to get your popcorn ready as we bring you a few quick stories you can share with your friends and your family. We call this just stuff <laughs> that is fun to know. Oh, yeah. If you're going to the water cooler today, take these stories <laughs> with you. All right. We're kicking things off in Waco, Texas at a drugstore back in 1885. That is when the first... Dr. Pepper was served. Do you like Dr. Pepper? Robert? It is good. It's different. It's good. I know. So good, right? What you're looking at on your screen is the notebook of Charles Alderson. He was a young pharmacist at the time who spent his spare time mixing up the fruit flavored syrup in the soda fountain machine. And he kept notes of what the mixtures made what flavors here, as you can see. That's what we're looking at. And this is, by the way, the oldest major soft drink brand in America. Wow. Definitely didn't know that. Before Coke, before Pepsi, there was the good doctor, right. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. Made by a pharmacist. And there's nothing else like it. You know what I mean? Like, so you good. can argue Coke and Pepsi kind of taste. They're in the similar. You know what I mean? They're a little right. different, but they're similar. Nothing else is like Dr. Pepper. You're right. I feel like there's a distinct Dr. Pepper taste that's really good. Even the diet yes. version is good. It is. Yeah. And it's hard to even identify what it tastes like. Like, it's hard to even say. It's its own say. thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's Dr. Pepper. It's Dr. Pepper. That's yeah. what it is. That's, that's all it is. And it's all it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So. I know. I want some, like, talking about it. I know. This is weird. I don't, yeah. <laughs> There's a vending machine in the hallway. You should crave I'll, it, yeah. I'll hook you up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, on to this next story for you. Uh, we, we were talking about inventions, right, and different innovations from creators. Well, get this one. Indeed. This very day, back in 1913, the Ford Motor Company introduced the continuously moving assembly line. Well, this made it, of course, possible to produce a Model T in just an hour and a half and drop the cost from 825 bucks in 1908 to $260 by 1925. During World War II, in fact, the company repurposed one of its lines to build heavy bombers. And by the end of the war, Ford had produced nearly 9,000 B-24s. Think about Ooh, it. Wow. Now you look at the assembly line and it's nothing, but at the time that revolutionized the entire oh, yeah. industry, manufacturing in in industry, just like that. Right. Yeah. It was cool looking at the black and white video, like just thinking about how this all started. Yes. Buzzword, where we are now. Yeah. Woo, that's impressive it stuff. It is. And if you ever really want to be amazed, sometimes you'll see this on the, on, on the news, mm -hmm. when they do footage inside of an Amazon warehouse. For all of us who oh, just yeah. go in there and say, click, 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 I need this, this, and that, it would be there on Thursday right. or whatever. But how the, the machines that move in there now and how they package it and sort it and get it to the, and they, you know, how many billions of orders do they do a day oh, or a month or whatever? It's amazing. Yes. Right? Yeah. That, that's a good word for Amazon amazes it me is. on the daily. How yeah. they do it. It's a <laughs> yeah. click for us. Prime. It's a whole operation. Order by this time, get it by tomorrow morning. Yes, it's wake amazing. up, it's at my door. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Gotta love it. Yep. Well, from a man whose moving invention changed the world to a woman whose stillness did the same thing. At 6 p.m. on December 1st, 1955. Oh, this gives me chills. 
Rosa Parks took a seat on a Memphis bus. Her seat was in the designated quote unquote colored section, but as the bus began to fill up with white passengers, the bus driver told Mrs. Parks to give up her seat. We know she did not. She was then arrested and in her biography, she wrote that she didn't stay put because she was tired from her work day, but that she was quote, tired of giving in. Mm. The power of one carrying the cause of millions. I mean, listen, you can't go through uh, any kind of even surface level uh, course in American history and not come across that story, which right. is why they call her the mother of the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And it was a simple act. I'm tired, I'm not, I'm not giving in. <laughs> I worked all day and that sparked in many ways the civil rights movement. There were many Rosa Parks before that famous day. Right. She was the one that made the headlines uh, and all of them collectively, you know, helped push America out of a dark spot to a better place. And Absolutely. she's the face and name we all know best. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it turned out to be one of our country's greatest leaders because of that, that one act of, of strength that probably took so much courage. Yep. That had to be so frightening for her being put under arrest. I mean, when we think like now, it's like, oh my gosh, it, it's chilling. It is. And it's a story you never get tired of hearing because it's so empowering. And, and so it simple. did so much for our country, yeah. It's a story of dignity. An old woman on a bus, you Bingo. know, who stood up by, sit, nope. by sitting down. All right, well, there's a lot more coming up on Afternoon Focus. Stay with us today to learn how one woman is honoring folks who lost their battle with COVID. Each one of these has a story and they see their loved one. What they instinctively do is they bend down and touch it. Oh, welcome back to Afternoon Focus and check out this pretty sunset. This is over San Diego from Mount Helix. So pretty, wow. City I've never been to, but I hear really is one of the country's Same. prettiest places. Same. Really, good yeah. story, living in a postcard. Right, right. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, no, and I always say that, I've been to California many times, but usually like the Los Angeles area, exactly. you know, like Malibu, you know, yeah, 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 Laguna yeah. Beach, you yeah, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never have I been to Sacramento, but, up, but <laughs> not San Diego, and everybody says it's so gorgeous. It but, is. Oh my gosh. Next time. It's, Sea lions, apparently, and just, yeah, it's really Sunsets and sea lions. What else you want? Yeah, yeah. we gotta go. Oh, gosh. All right, well, so today, you may know this, today is World AIDS Day, where we honor those who lost their lives to the disease. Back in the late 1980s, during the height of the AIDS epidemic, the National AIDS Quilt was created as a living memorial to those who lost their lives. It was so huge back in the day. Really, everyone knew mm -hmm. about that quilt. Well, now, fast forward. A few decades, a woman is threading together a very similar tribute to recognize the victims, the survivors, and the essential workers of the COVID pandemic. Well, Megan Knight is in Pikesville, Maryland with the story. Sharon was a caregiver to families and ended up passing from COVID. She knows their names and their stories. Russell Livingston, his panel tells it all. He's a sportsman. This is Sarah King. She was a nursery school director, but here her children created the pictures of her. Yet the only person from this quilt who Sandy Nagel really knew on a personal level was her dear friend, Susan Mazur. She loved to laugh and we had lots of laughs. Susan died of COVID last year. Her death left a big hole in Sandy's heart and it sparked an idea of how to memorialize Susan and all who have been impacted by this virus. Many of the people in the beginning died in hospitals alone and families didn't get to say a fitting farewell. I created the quilt so that people can, they're actually physically saying their goodbyes. The National COVID-19 quilt is modeled after the National AIDS quilt from the late 80s. Sandy wants to collect 1,920 panels from all 50 states, the same number of the original AIDS quilt. The quilt is a living history. It's a living history of the people. The quilt is not just for those who have died of COVID. It also honors the survivors, like Michael Green, one of the first in Maryland to get the virus. It'll also pay tribute to all of the essential workers. Each one of these has a story. And Sandy commits each story to memory as these panels come in, determined to not let them become just another number or statistic. People go to the quilt and they see their loved one. What they instinctively do is they bend down and touch it. 
It's like touching a grave marker. It tells a story of somebody who passed, and this is their family's memorial to them. Oh, what a sweet lady. Well, Sandy hopes to lay the quilt panels on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. in the spring of next year. If you'd like to learn how to send a panel to be included in the quilt, just head over to our Afternoon Focus Facebook page. Mm. Uh, I remember well, earlier days crossing the 100,000 casualty mark and thinking, oh my God, this is insane. I was in New York at the time too, the epicenter, mm -hmm. and now that we're, we're at a million <sighs> and still three or 400 every day, let's not ever become numb to that no matter how the vaccines and the boosters go and it's better now than it was then a million plus and counting uh, is still the worst of any country in the world. Um, let's not again become numb to that. Follow follow her lead. Oh, you, you yeah. said it all right yeah. there. That, that's the truth. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Oh, we're going to squeeze in a quick break. We don't go anywhere. Coming up next, we've got some great tips for you how to combat all that holiday stress. We know it's coming. We might be feeling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to figure out how to get through it next. Where's my drink? Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, we all know the song. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Oh, the lyrics, though, I, <laughs> my great singing voice. Those lyrics, though, as we also all know, could be edited to include words like expensive and stressful. Yes. So how can we make sure we don't lose the fun of the holiday season because we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off, mm -hmm. trying to be all things to all people in our lives. Our friend Keenan Smith is in Detroit with some great solutions. Here we go. No, it's a short word, but it can be hard to say, especially during the holidays. But with all of the requests for us to drop by, do a favor, bake a batch, support a cause, shop till you drop, and all the other ways we're asked for our time, money, and attention, saying no more could be the key to happiness. Why is it that we have such a difficult time saying no? Oftentimes, we are really worried about what other people are going to think about us. Licensed professional counselor Kelly Hausman says, generally, we want to get along, and we often want to avoid disappointing or hurting the person making the request. For others, it's a fear of conflict. Is it hard saying no? No, not for me. Kasima Simpson is planning her upcoming wedding and says she's learned to say no, in part to protect time with her fiancé, Yolanda. People are scared to have conversations. If I can't make it, even if I've committed to it, I have no problem making a phone call or sending a text and said, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Being honest with those making the request and yourself is essential in taking on less and may actually protect that relationship down the road. It's better to be a little bit uncomfortable having these conversations than it is to be angry and bitter that you signed up for something that you just don't have the bandwidth to deal with. Houseman has some tips for saying no. First, she says to remember what you gain by saying no. Is it less stress? Does it free you up to spend time with your family? Does it take the strain off your finances? Keep those benefits in mind. Also, no can be a complete sentence. A lot of people try to explain or say sorry or apologize, but again, just a simple no is enough on its own. And if they keep pushing, tell them simply, that doesn't work for me. You just keep saying that and holding your boundaries strong. If the request is one you may actually consider, but aren't sure in the moment, tell them you'll get back to them. That will allow you time to consider the pros and cons and make a thoughtful decision. A shopper, Khalees, who I caught up with, says it's important to know what you can and can't do, even though she would love to give everybody everything with a flood of donation requests it's impossible we want to help everyone out but um you know i also don't want to be in debt and that feels worse than saying no good point yeah it's about boundaries and i, and I think not just holiday time anytime saying no you just you can't do it all you can't be everybody to all people and you just have to this is what i can do that's a wrap. Exactly. <laughs> That's Don't it. apologize. No. It's okay to say no. It is okay. Great advice. That's we can right. carry on even after the holiday season. And you know what? No. We're not going to do any more in this segment than that. <laughs> than this. We'll be right back. We will. <laughs> Oh, welcome back. Well, before we say goodbye for the afternoon, we want you to check out this teacher who's showing his kids a fresh way to learn the alphabet. S, go Riley. T, U, V, O, O, W, X, Y, and Z. My ABCs, now why don't you sing with me? Why don't you sing with me? 
Go kids, go, go kids. kids, that was go awesome. Kids. You know what, that's all about energy, good energy, and they were, that sticks with kids, they remember that, you know what Absolutely. I mean? They're having fun. Making learning fun, that's, that's it. exactly it. That's when it sticks <laughs> with you. Yes, and getting some rhythm too. <laughs> we want to see you back here tomorrow because you know that pit kind of in your stomach uh, when you're trying to go to bed, well, most of us do. Uh, tomorrow we're going to help you turn those anxious nights into productive days. A few simple steps. Don't miss that. Can't wait. And also send us your ideas, please. If you know anybody in your life, maybe it's you doing great things. Uh, we want to highlight you on this show. So send it on our Facebook page to us.